I just love your pastor, uh, and I'm very, very thankful for the, uh, the, the preacher and the pastor that the Lord's brought to you right here, and uh, his heart for souls and revival and crusades and all of those things, and so very, very thankful for him. Um, and it is uh, good to be here. He did mention that the name of our ministry is Faith for Revival Ministries, and that's our, it's our main website. Um, we do have another website for the crusade that uh, you've received there, the, the flyer there, it's hopecrusade.org. And uh, so it's on the back. You can even scan a QR code to get to there. Uh, but uh, uh, with the video with the 9-11, we're, very pra we're praising the Lord. We had over 205,000 views uh, of that. We, you know, we sh probably should have been more, but uh, we're just really grateful to be able to, to see that one as well. So we're doing uh, some with video and some with uh, other outreaches with crusades and a lot of uh, things that the Lord's brought to our, our attention. So we're grateful for all of that. If we can be a help to you, let us know. But please, uh, you could be a help to us to pray for us. And think about coming to that prayer rally next Saturday at 10 a.m. And I would love maybe 45 minutes <laughs> uh, just to be safe there and uh, to get in. But we'd love to, to have you come in for that as well. And that's for the entire church. Uh, it's not just for men or it's not just for pastors, okay? Uh, so that is for everyone. Acts chapter 16, and uh, we're going to begin in verse 26. Let's stand and uh, show our public respect for God's word. Uh, Acts chapter 16, we find a story here, an incredible and a miraculous story. And... Uh, it includes an earthquake, a jailbreak, and a salvation story as well. But there's a backstory to it. How did this take place? Look at Acts chapter 16, verse 26. The Bible says, And, there's, and suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundation of the prison uh, were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosed. The keeper of the prison awakened out of sleep, seeing the prison doors open, and drew out his sword, and would have killed himself supposing that the prisoners had been fled. Verse 28, but, craw, but Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in and trembl came trembling and fell down before him and before Paul and Silas. Verse 30, and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Look at verse 32. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord to all that were in his house. Later it says that his entire house believed and they were truly saved. But how did this take place? Well, they were at the right place at the right time. The message today in the title is how to be at the right place at the right time. Let's pray and ask the Lord to help us. Father, Lord, I ask that you'd work in our hearts with divine appointments and trusting you to rearrange our schedule to fit your schedule to be able to see people saved. Lord, I pray that you save each one here that does not know Christ as Savior. Help us as believers to be used of you to trust you and your plans in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for standing. You may be seated. We were uh, pulling out of a parking lot and, uh, and our, our RV in South Carolina. It was a tight turn. And as soon as I um, uh, was doing that tight turn, I had my window down and I could hear a metal clang. Went clang. And I just stopped. I put the RV in reverse and I backed it back up. And my wife said, what are you doing? I said, I'm backing it up because we're not going anywhere. What do you mean? I said, we just broke a leaf string. How do you know? I know, <laughs> and uh, I know that clang, and uh, so sure enough, there was a leaf spring underneath the trailer that um, was broken, and uh, we were supposed to be gone. We are supposed to be leaving. That Sunday, we had a friend day. It was okay, but it wasn't great, and we didn't see anyone saved, and it was less attended than the pastor wanted, but now we're sticking around. He said, well, since you're here for the week and waiting for the repair, will you preach on Wednesday? And I said, I sure would. And I preached that Wednesday on expecting the impossible from uh, God. And uh, God did some impossible things. During that service, there was a couple that was on the brink of divorce. And God rescued their marriage. There were some others, uh, and he wrote me this long letter uh, about that. There were some others that made some life-changing decisions in surrendering to the Lord that service on a Wednesday night. But then there was an exchange student from China. 
and he was supposed to come on Sunday, but he got it mixed up and he came on Wednesday. I was at the right place at the right time. And he came in from an atheist country and he heard for the first time, there's a God who created him and loves him and provided salvation through his son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for all of his sins. And that exchange student, later after the service, I was able to lead him to Christ, and he trusted Jesus as his personal Savior. We're, we're, um, we're walking out, and he sees the board in the hallway, the map with all the pictures. And he says, well, what's this? You know what that is, don't you? A map and pictures of the world? It would be a missions board, missionaries. And he said, who are they? I said, these are people that go to different countries and tell those people what I told you today and how to be saved. And he looked at China. He said, there's no one to China. I said, no, there isn't. He says, well, maybe I could be the next one. <laughs> at the right place, at the right time. You know, it wasn't comfortable. We had a, a, a repair that was needed. It was uh, expensive. But you know, oftentimes God changes our original plans for his divine appointments so we can be at the right place at the right time. But we need to trust God when he changes our plans and say, Lord, help me to look for the divine appointment that you have for me. How do you get to the right place at the right time? Well, they were able to meet this man, this Philippian jailer who had the earthquake. He's supposed to guard the prisoners. They saw the doors open. He said, if the doors are open, I, I'm going to, uh, the prisoners are going to escape. I'm going to lose my life. That was the penalty if they escaped. He's going to kill himself. I don't know what was going on in his life. Maybe he had already thought about this scenario. Maybe he had depression. Maybe things weren't right at home. Maybe um, he had some uh, discouragement. Maybe he wasn't paying the bills like he ought to. But he was ready to commit suicide. And Paul said, no, 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 do, thy, the, the, do thyself no harm. They brought in a light, and he asked the two evangelists, Paul and Silas, he said, what must I do to be saved? But in order for that place the, to that to take place, Paul and Silas had to be at the right place at the right time. And there's a lot of backstory. How do we? There's three ways for us to be at the right place at the right time. Number one, don't disobey when the Spirit says no. Don't disobey when the Holy Spirit says no. The Holy Spirit's going to tell you and direct you and lead you to be at the right place at the right time. Look at uh, chapter 16. Look earlier in the, the passage. Look, if you will, at verse 6. The Bible says this. It says, now when they had gone through Phrygia and the region of Galatia and were, notice this, forbidden of the Holy Ghost to do what? To preach the word in Asia. What was wrong? Was it, were they not supposed to preach the word? Is that sin? No. Were they not supposed to go to Asia? Well, that's not necessarily wrong. But for them to preach the word in Asia at that time was wrong. It was not the right place. That was not where God wanted them. But they didn't know. They're just trying to do what's right. I want to go over here. The Holy Spirit says, I forbid you. Isn't that strong? Forbidden of the Holy Spirit to go there. No, let's keep reading. Look at verse 7. After they were come to Mysia, they essayed to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. Well, let, let's go over here to Bithynia. Let's go to this place over here. And the Spirit, when it says suffered them not, means the Holy Spirit did not allow them. You're not allowed to go there. Have you ever not been allowed as a young person to go someplace? <laughs> no, you can't go to that place. You can't go to that friend's house. You can't go over there. Uh, um, and you're not allowed to go. The Holy Spirit's not allowing them. Okay. What did they do? Did they say, we're going to go anyway. We're going to go to Asia. We're going to go to Bithynia. We're doing God's work. No, 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 no. They need to obey the Holy Spirit. Would you realize this? That God's no is not negative, but it is needed and used to direct our paths. God said, oh, we're going to go to Asia. No, I forbid you. Well, we're going to go over here to Bithynia. No, I'm not allowing you to go there. Why is God telling me no? I'm just trying to serve him. That wasn't their idea. You know what? They're, they're saying, okay, if God's saying no, then he's trying to direct us in a different path. Then he's asleep, Paul's asleep, and he has a vision from Macedonia. And the, he says, the Macedonian vision, come over and help us. Now look at you would at verse 10. Skip to verse 10. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia. 
assuredly gathering that the Lord hath called us for to preach the gospel unto them. Now, I know for sure, don't go over there, don't go over there, this is where you go, this is the path to go, is that I know for sure that the Lord called us to preach here. You know, there's some things I know for sure. I know in April, no doubt in my mind that I'm supposed to be in Mark preaching the gospel there. I believe with all my heart. I believe, even though it was not planned, I was supposed to be here today. How did I get here today? Are you ready? Thursday, it was raining like cats and dogs. I mean, not real cats and dogs, but you know, lots of rain. It was ponding up on through Kentucky and, and southern Indiana so much, I hydroplaned a few times. You know, the, it's moving and there's lights come on on the dashboard, like the airbag or whatever. I'm glad it didn't go off. <laughs> you know? And uh, I'm glad that didn't happen. And, uh, you know, so things are really wet. I don't know what took place, but one time it, my brakes found a little weird, but they were okay. I pulled off the exit at Martinsville. I go around the roundabout. And then I start heading about half mile, right off the exit is the fairgrounds. I'm gonna go see it. So I go to the fairgrounds, put on my signal to turn left, and I press my brakes, and I'm not stopping. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm just laying hard on the brakes, and I barely got it to stop, but the entrance was way back there. <laughs> I'm like, I'm in the middle, there's cars behind me, my, the person I'm supposed to be meeting going, what are you doing? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> you know? So I, I eased it in reverse. I backed up. I'm laying on that. I'm going like three, four miles an hour. I'm just barely getting it to stop. I ease it into the parking lot. And I'm laying on it just to get it to stop. I put it in park and said, we've got to use your car. And here I am. <laughs> because we're trying to figure out this brake thing and ABS system. And there's, if there's a recall, or whatever, yada, yada. And I have to wait until Monday to talk to the dealership more specifically. Okay. Now, I didn't, I don't like it when my brakes don't work. How about you? <laughs> but for some reason, I don't know why, God wanted me at Charity Baptist Church this morning. I believe that. So there's a reason for this today. I believe we're at the right place at the right time, and there's a reason for you to be here. Maybe you're a guest. Maybe this is first time, or maybe just your second, third time. And God brought you here, maybe for you to hear a message like this where God's changing things in your life, you need to say, okay, Lord, I'm willing to trust you and take God's no as not negative, but a way to direct my paths. What does Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 say? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lead not to thine own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. You know what, when it says direct thy path, it means to cut a path. It's like if you're going through the woods and it's really unclear, you don't know which way to go, I can't, it's kind of a path there. Is this a path there? I hate that. But I like it when it's real clear. It's a wide path. But the, it's not just a path. It's the idea of, it's the same word when John the Baptist was going to go before the Lord and he was going to make a highway. Now we're talking. How to get to Martinsville? New 69. No, you know, hopefully get all those stoplights out of the way and everything. And a big, wide interstate and a highway. Now you know exactly where to go. That's where God's directing. But God has to tell us no oftentimes. I've seen the Lord's hand. I wasn't scheduled. I'm supposed to, uh, to preach anywhere today. I'm preaching tonight in Trafalgar. Tomorrow I have an appointment that was very important. God's putting all these things together. Would you today just say, Lord, help me to trust you when you change my path and not to say no or disobey the Holy Spirit when you tell me no. Number one, don't disobey when the Spirit says no. How to be at the right place at the right time. Number two, don't trust your feelings. Don't trust your feelings. Your feelings, your emotions, your heart will deceive you 90% of the time. It, it is desperately wicked. Look, if you would. As we uh, keep uh, reading, look at verse 20. Skip all the way down to verse 20. It says this, And brought them to the magistrates, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city. Okay, stop right there. So now they've gone to Macedonia. Now they are in Philippi. And as they're walking around Philippi, they're preaching the gospel. That's a good thing, right? 
Uh, now, we didn't see this, but earlier in the verses, you can look at Lydia. It says, whose heart the Lord opened. I believe she trusted Christ as Savior. She was baptized, so they met her. But they're walking around, they're preaching, and there's a girl behind them. Like a young girl, teenage probably. And you know what she's saying? These are the men. These men preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. These men are, are declaring Jesus Christ. All, all of these things. You think, well, that's helpful. No, it wasn't helpful. She was demon-possessed. And she was distracting everyone from the message. So they're walking around, and here's this, this girl. She just keeps following them. Well, she had masters that used her to foretell future and things like that and to make money. Well, during this time, what, what they did, when she was saying that, they turned and say they cast out the demon from her. And she was free. Now, I think, I think she probably heard the gospel from them as well. It's very likely that she was even saved, but she's free from this demon possession. Well, now the owners of her were infuriated. They grabbed Paul and Silas. They brought them before the rulers called magistrates. They said, these men are doing exceedingly trouble our city. Let's put them in prison and such. And uh, it says, verse 21, and they teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. Verse 22, and the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates ran off their clothes and commanded to beat them. Oh, that doesn't sound good. Does that sound like a nice day? What are you doing Monday? Well, I think I'm going to go get beat. Uh, that wouldn't be a, in your schedule, would it? But it's in God's. Verse 23, and when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the, the jailer, ah, the jailer, to keep them safely. Who, having received such a charge, he just didn't put them in any prison cell, thrust them into the inner prison, and made their feet fast in the stocks. So now they've been mistreated, unlawfully arrested. They have now been beaten, where they're bloody and, and, and have been bleeding. It's not just a little whack, it is whipping with uh, leather and such, and, a, and certainly a perhaps even a scourging, but it's a bloody uh, type of a beating. And now the prison keeper says, well, i got to keep these guys. If I let them out, I'm going to lose my job. I'm going to lose my life. So I'm going to put them in the in innermost part of the prison. You think there's lots of lights in there? No, this is Bible times. You think, uh, think it was nice? It had good facilities? Hmm. Could you imagine the stink and the stench, the musty, the disgustingness of it? Not only in the innermost part of the prison, but then they put it where their feet were in the stocks, where they couldn't even move. Most likely not standing, most, I don't know, most likely sitting in this uncomfortable position, being been beaten, and now their feet in the stocks. You know what? If they're going to say, hey, Silas, how you feel? Man, I feel awesome. This is great. How about you? <laughs> Paul, oh. If they based and they trusted their feelings, they're going, Wait a minute, I told you we should have gone to Asia. Well, I knew it when we, I wanted to go to Bithynia. But now here we are in Philippi. Great. I thought the Lord was in this, and he just abandoned us. No, they didn't say that. They didn't trust their feelings. You know, your feelings are going to um, trick you. Don't allow two things with your feelings. Don't allow your feeling of fear the emotion of fear to replace your faith. When things aren't going well, do not let the emotion or feeling of fear replace your faith. Trust the Lord. Perfect love casts out fear. Fear is looking to self and self-preservation and, and just, oh, well, this is uncomfortable for me and I don't want this and what's going to happen to me? But when you are full of God's love and selfless, then you have a faith and a boldness. Trust God's word to know you're in God's will, not your emotion. You know, people say to me, oh, oh, Brother Miller, I don't go to church anymore. I have church in my bedroom. It's called Bedroom Baptist Church, apparently. And um, maybe they have Pastor Pillow, I don't know, as the pastor. And uh, I just have a peace that I could just meet with God. Okay. You know what that person is? They're tricked. Their emotions are tricking them, and they think it's okay 
to not go to church, but they're disobeying the Bible and what Jesus said. Isn't that right? That's exactly right. So can your feelings trick you? Have you ever heard someone say, oh, I just have a piece that I should go over here and take this job. Well, where is this job? It's in a liquor store. What? Um, I, I just need to make ends meet. And a job came open. It pays good. Well, it's a bartender. Now, look, don't try to tell me that uh, you're, you have peace from God when you're try to, trying to do something like that. And don't let your fear of, I don't know if I can make ends meet otherwise. God can provide for you, but certainly Satan can distract for opportunities. Don't trust your emotions or your feelings in making decisions in your life and knowing God's will. Trust God's word. If you find that you're not in God's will, then repent. Change that. Say, Lord, I said no to you, and I busted right through your when you wouldn't allow me. Here I am. I'm in a mess. But God can lift you up out of a mess, forgive you, and get you back on the right path. Is there someone here? Say, Brother Miller, I haven't been on the right path. Today, I'm at the right place right now because I need God to bring me back to where I need to be. Stop trusting your feelings. Don't let your fear replace your faith. But don't let, don't allow this. Don't allow your feeling of resentment to steal your joy. Don't allow your feeling of resentment to steal your joy. Here they are. They're in prison for not breaking the law, but preaching the gospel. People have been saved. God's working in a great way. They haven't done anything wrong, but they're being mistreated. They weren't in there bitter. They weren't in there complaining. They were in there doing what? Look at verse 25. Acts 16, 25. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. And what's the next two words? sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. Here they are, they're singing praises to God. You know what? The other prisoners are here. What's that noise? It's not someone cursing that they always hear. It's not someone yelling and complaining, saying, this is food is lousy. Get me out of here. I'm, I'm not guilty. No, they don't hear that. They hear Paul and Silas, and they're singing praise to God. <laughs> Our great Savior. Wasn't that a great song? Oh, Jesus, what a friend for sinners. And they're singing praises to God, and they're doing all of this. You know why? Because they didn't let their resentment steal their joy. In Acts 13, we see the apostles thrown out of a city. And the Bible says this, and they shook off the dust, Acts 15, 13, 51, and that they shook off the dust of their feet against them. And they came unto Iconium, verse 52, and the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. You see, the reason why you're not full of joy is because of the resentment crept in. It stole your joy. But when you're filled with the Spirit, are you listening? When you're filled with the Spirit, He can provide supernatural joy that overcomes all your circumstances. Would you say, dear God, help me to have that joy and to be full of song? How to be at the right place at the right time? Number one, don't disobey when the Holy Spirit says no. Number two, don't trust your feelings. Number three, don't miss God's divine opportunity. Don't miss God's divine opportunity. So God had an opportunity for these men. Along the way, they met the damsel, helped her. They met Lydia. She was saved. But now all of these things being beaten, put into prison, was to get in this prison to be able to see this jailer saved and to see his family. His entire family got saved because of Paul and Silas. Don't miss God's opportunity. What if they disobeyed? You miss God's opportunity when you disobey. Will you say today, Lord, help me to be, like we mentioned in Sunday school, that horse that is tender, and responsive to the voice of the master and not be stubborn and rebellious, a revolting spirit. Would you say, dear God, help me to obey? Do you obey God's word? Do you fear God's word like we talked about? When God says, if you're a friend of the world, you're an enemy of God. He says, if you, do, if you love me, you will do my sayings. You will keep my commandments. Are you obeying 
God's word and what the Lord Jesus has told you to do. Would you say, dear God, help me to not miss your divine opportunities by not obeying, but most importantly, by not being bold. There have been times in your life that you missed the opportunity where God put you in the right place and an unsaved person at the right place. And you didn't tell them what? You didn't tell them what they told them. Look at verse 30 and 31. They brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? How can I be saved from my sin, rescued from my sin? Look at verse 31. Here's one answer, one response. And they said, want to help me out? Want to help me out? And they said, ready? Let's read it out loud. And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Now, when it says, and thy house, I mean, your family also can believe, but each one believe on Jesus Christ. Let me ask, just yes or no, out loud. Have you believed on Jesus Christ to be your Savior? If you haven't, today you can. If you have, you say, I know I'm saved. If, if you trusted Jesus, then he rescued you, just like someone that's drowning out in the ocean. And they say, help! A lifeguard jumps in, they rescue you, and they pull him off to the shore, and, to the, and they said, now you're saved. When you get to the shore, do you keep going like this? <laughs> I don't want to drown. I don't want to. You're on the beach now. You're on the shore. You don't have to do that. You're now saved. Have you believed on Jesus? You're now saved from your sin. You will never have to pay the punishment for your sin. But if you're here today and you haven't made this decision, would you recognize that you're a sinner? Because of your sin, you deserve to go to hell. And Jesus Christ is the only one, the only one that could save you. Notice he didn't, they didn't say believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and get baptized and do good and be a good person and try real hard. One thing, faith alone in Jesus alone. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You can be saved today. In just a few moments when we have the end of the service, we have what's called invitation where we invite you to make a decision based upon the word of God. Will you today recognize, I can't be good enough, I can't do good, but I must be saved by believing. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, for by grace are you saved through faith, now, not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Would you today recognize, I need to be saved by believing on Jesus. And today, you're here because you're at the right place at the right time. Would you speak? Would you be bold? It says that they, in verse, look if you would, verse 32, it says, And they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. Now, the, isn't that where it just comes down? They spake. You have to open your mouth. In Acts 8, there's a Philip with meeting an Ethiopian, and he had to open his mouth. He says, he at the, began at the same scripture and opened his mouth and began to preach unto him Jesus. We just have to open our mouth and speak. Listen to Ephesians chapter 6. The Bible says this, And for me that utterance may be given unto me. That means utterance means ability to speak and power to speak. That I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Do you open your mouth boldly to tell others about Jesus? You say, oh, Brother Miller, I, I obey when the Holy Spirit says, no, don't go there. No, don't go there. I obey. Well, that's wonderful. I don't trust my feelings. I trust God's word to know I'm in God's will. That's wonderful. Now you're at the right place. Here's this person at the restaurant. Here's a person, and you actually have to go in and, and pay gas for the gas or something, and you have to enter, uh, have conversation. Are you going to back down, or are you going to actually hand them the track? Will you... The Holy Spirit says, go, no, stop there, turn around and go speak to that person. Now's the question. Will you obey or you miss God's opportunity? Will you be bold? Boldness does not come from you and your personality. Boldness comes from when you're filled with the Holy Spirit and he helps you to do what you can't do otherwise. I am not bold. I hate confrontation. But here I am. You know, I go to big guys in New York City. And, uh, and tell them about Jesus Christ. Why? Because the Holy Spirit helps me to do that. And he can give you the boldness as well. 
being at the right place at the right time doesn't mean that everything's going to go well, but it means that God has something better planned for you. I was finishing a revival service in Chicago years ago, and we left at night. And we're gonna, it was Easter weekend, a Friday night, so we were going to travel down 65. We got about to Logansport, and I think it was, and we pulled off to get um, fuel and uh, some things at the Flying J truck stop. Well, I smelled burning rubber. I went back to my trailer, and two of my tires were touching. And it could have started a fire. Looked under, leaf springs. <laughs> Every time leaf springs break, somebody is going to get saved. So I said, okay, Lord, who's going to get saved? <laughs> so I pull the truck off. I have to park it there. And, and I'm looking. And finally, I get, you know, it's late at night. It's like 1130 midnight. And I'm ca calling. And finally, I get a place. Um, and he said, I'll come in the morning to uh, come and see your, your leaf springs. And I said, okay, it's Jerry's Auto. Must be really good. Jerry's Auto. And uh, so... He comes, and he looks at it, and, uh, yep, I know what it is. Okay, we'll get that. So I need to get right away. I need to get down. We're having family pictures for Easter uh, weekend and everything. Okay, all right. I look at, go back in, and Jerry's sitting in the flying J at the, at the stool going, <laughs> trying to sip in his coffee. I'm like, are you going to go get the parts? Well, we'll get them. I said, oh, come on. And uh, so I said, well, Lord, maybe you stop me so Jerry could be saved. So I said, Lord. Would you please help Jerry to be saved? Then I really started believing. I said, Lord, I really believe. Lord, would you help Jerry to be saved? God, I'm trusting you for, for this. I mean, that's pretty specific. And I'm really trusting and believing that God's going to do that. A couple hours later, knock at the trailer. Open it up. Where's Jerry? Uh, he sent me to be able to take the parts and put them on your trailer. I said, Okay. Is he coming back? No, he won't be back. <laughs> Lord, I really thought, you know, Jerry would be, would be saved. Well, he does the work, and he said, hey, um, are you going to pay with credit card? I, he, I said, yes. He said, well, we have to go to the shop to do that. Want to ride with me? So I hopped in this truck, and I thought, well, maybe I need to give him the gospel. So I gave him a track, not while he was driving. <laughs> and I started talking to him, and he was interested. We got to the shop and make the payment, and I give him more of the gospel. The whole time he's asking questions. He's thirty something years old, got a family, a couple kids. Gets back to the truck stop. We stop the truck, and for a half hour, we're sitting there, and I'm giving them the gospel. And right there in the truck stop, he bows his head, and he trusts Christ as Savior. Amen. And by the way, his name was Jerry Jr. <laughs> I was praying for Jerry. I thought it was his dad. <laughs> but God saved Jerry. Look, none of that was comfortable, and we had to rearrange our schedule, and all these things changed. But we're at the right place at the right time. Don't disobey the Holy Spirit when he tells you no. Don't trust your feelings. Don't miss God's divine opportunity by not being bold in the Holy Spirit to help you. Would you respond today to what the Lord will have and say, Lord, I'll trust you to be at the right place at the right time. If you need to be saved, would you be saved today? Let's bow for prayer. Father, I ask for your help. Would you give us your grace and your strength even right now? Lord, I ask for clear wisdom in this invitation. With our heads bowed, with our eyes closed, let me ask a couple of questions. First of all, same question I asked before. If you have already placed your faith in Jesus Christ, you believed on Jesus to be your Savior, can you raise your hand right now if you've already done that? I know that I believed on Jesus already. That's fantastic. Great. You can place your hands down. Now, you can place your hand. Thank you. I, I couldn't see everyone, but it looked like maybe there were a couple that couldn't raise their hand. If that's true for you, that's okay, but don't stay there, okay? Okay. I want to pray for you, and would you let me to do that? If you're here and you say, Preacher, I've never trusted Jesus alone to be my Savior, or I don't know if I died, if I would definitely go to heaven, would you let me pray for you right now? 
If you don't, if you're not trusted Jesus before, or if you don't know that you're on your way to heaven, would you let me pray for you right now? Would you slip your hand up? Say, preacher, pray for me. I have not done that. or I don't know for sure that I'm on my way to heaven. Is there anyone like that? Just in the few moments we have right now, just to, quickly, would you pray for me? Let me pray for you by raising your hand. Anyone like that? Okay, let me ask next. Who would hear say, Brother Mo, I'm saved, but God spoke into my heart today in one of these areas, and I want to just be willing and be bold to be at the right place at the right time. And God's spoken to me, and I want to respond to the hymn and the Holy Spirit today. If God's spoken to you, would you slip your hand up throughout the room? God bless you. A good number, a real good number. And I praise the Lord for that. So you can place your hands down. Would you look this way? Look right here. I would say over half of us have raised our hand in response. I, would I encourage you to do this today? In just a moment, when we stand, I'll pray. And after we pray, we'll have the pianist play. Would you do this? I'll pray for you when we're standing, but I'm going to encourage you. Would you step out from where you are and pray for yourself after I pray while she's playing the piano? Maybe you've never done that before. That's okay. Just come. Just come to the front. Find a place. If you can't kneel, then have a seat at one of the closer seats uh, at the front. You can stand if you like to stand if you can't do that. But would you respond and just have a time where you pray for yourself and your decision in response to the Lord? Would you do that? Everyone standing, let's bow for prayer. Father, I ask, would you please help us? And each one, Lord, so many raise their hands. And Lord, you're doing a work in our hearts. Help us to respond to you in this right way. And to be